Hey guys, how's it going? So a while back I made a video about my home network and in that video I asked you guys if you wanted to uh, get some information or if you want me to create a video about my home theater system and I got a lot of feedback saying you guys are interested and that's where I am right now. Right now I'm in my family room and what we're going to do today is take a look at my home theater system and we're going to do that right after this. And I'm back. Hey, it's you and Henry, and this is Tech in My Life. So if this is your first time here, thanks for tuning in to my channel. On the channel, I discuss tech I use on a day-to-day -day basis. I touch on some of the advantages or disadvantages and the all-around usefulness of the technology that I use in my house. Before we jump into it, I'd very much appreciate you guys taking a second to click that subscribe button. While you're at it, be sure you hit that notification bell so whenever I post new videos or whenever I go live, you guys will be informed. So without further ado, let's jump right into this home theater and let's take a look at some of the components I used. So when I get up and I walk down the stairs, um, I use Alexa to start my home theater. I'll give it the command, um, hey Alexa, turn on TV, TV comes on, the receiver comes on, everything is uh, tuned to the correct inputs and outputs. And by the time I get to my chair, I'll stop, I'll grab the remote control, sit down and I'm ready to go. That's my typical, just the way I get started. Now, once I sit down, what I'm using is my Logitech remote control. We'll get more into the remote control in a few minutes, but the first thing I'm going to talk about is my Samsung Q8FN. It's a 4K TV with HDR, and again, I'm not going to get a whole lot into the, the specs of the TV, but what I will do is in this little section over here, I will post um, some of the, the specs of the TV. And next component that kind of helps to bring it all together is my Yamaha receiver. And in this case, my receiver is the Yamaha RX 2070. It's a nine channel um, receiver uh, that's powered. It's nine powered, but it can take up to 11 channels. Um, if I add an external amplifier, I can run 11 channels. Right now, I'm only running five channel. My system is a 5.1 system. So that means I have five speakers and the point one represents the subwoofer for anyone that doesn't know. I'm pretty sure most of you guys know um, what the numbers mean when you see 5.1, 7.1, 7.2 and so on. Um, the receiver can do Dolby Atmos and that's one of the next steps I plan on taking is getting some height speakers for the front and sooner or later the back. Because of the dynamics of this room, because of the layout rather of this room, I don't really think it's conducive to uh, big speakers. Uh, the bookshelf speakers that I have, they're six and a half inch drivers, they're by infinity. I've had them well over 10 years and it wasn't until I helped a friend of mine set up his home theater and I advised him to use ELAC speakers and I heard his speakers and that's when I realized how, how much room for improvement I have even by updating to another set of bookshelf speakers. Uh, so that's something that I'm thinking about. and. If you're a home theater enthusiast, you know it's your system is never really complete. It just goes through iterations and phases. And for me, this is not my first or uh, setup, but I still consider this more or less a budget setup because there's some more expensive components like the receiver and the TV, but my speakers are not super expensive and they've, I've had them for a while. And I'm not running an external amp, which is another thing that I plan on going to. Um, at some point, I do plan on migrating my system to uh, a dedicated theater in the basement. 
And I think that's when I will go to maybe two subs, floor standing speakers, um, and a full Atmos setup. But in the family room here, this is more than enough for us right now. Uh, I, I call the receiver sort of the, the muscles of the system and my NVIDIA Shield is sort of the brains of the system. With the NVIDIA Shield, um, I get to load all of my apps. It is an Android OS operating system running Android TV. Thing about the NVIDIA Shield that sets it apart from a lot of other streaming dev devices, it's its power. You can get easily um, 4K 60 to play. You don't. You shouldn't have any problem with H. 265, H.264, big 4K files. I, I play just about anything I throw at my NVIDIA Shield. It plays no problem. Um, HDR content, the, as far as sound go, DTSX, Atmos. I don't, while well, I'm not running Atmos, it will decode it. It will push it through to the receiver. The receiver will decode it. So just about anything you throw at the NVIDIA Shield, it'll handle audio wise, video wise. And again, the receiver has the power to push it out to these speakers. These speakers are not extremely power hungry. So for this room, again, it's an odd shaped room, but the way I have the speakers directed at my listening or my viewing position, I get great sound out of it for what it is. To the left of the NVIDIA Shield is my uh, Sony PlayStation 3 and directly under the PlayStation 3 is where I keep a lot of my son's games, a couple of my games. Um, he has some Lego games that Lego Dimensions, you can probably see some of the Legos there that he plays on the PlayStation. Um, Directly above the few components there is my center channel. It's an infinity center channel. Um, nothing to expect. I mean, it sounds great in my opinion. Um, I have heard things that sound much better and there is some of the room for improvement because like I said, to me, this is, it's a budget system because while the receiver is uh, pretty high end and the TV is pretty high end where I feel like my, com my my entertainment system comes up wanting is speakers and powered amplification. Although I've been building it piece by piece for years, I still consider this version 1.0.5. I've yet to go to version 2.0 because I, I think version 2.0 for me would be that same receiver with something like a seven channel Emotiva and 5.1.4 um, using SVS speakers. That would be version two. And I'm hoping that late next year sometime, I'll be able to do a review of version two with um, this same receiver, uh, a powered amplifier, and SVS speakers. Okay, sitting on the top of the entertainment cabinet, we have a couple of items of note. First, we have my son's uh, Nintendo. Next to that, we have an Amazon Echo right in front of that. We have a Logitech keyboard. That Logitech keyboard works in conjunction with the Logitech Harmony One remote. Next, we have a Google Home Mini. Um, a little bit down in the cabinet, to the left of the center channel speaker. That is the Harmony Hub. So what that does, it takes all of the commands from the remote and converts it to whatever signal is necessary to control um, various components. So if it's a Bluetooth signal that's necessary, uh, the remote sends a signal to the uh, hub. The hub converts it to Bluetooth sends it out to, for example, the PlayStation. Um, it also have a RF blaster. So technically all of my components can be behind a wall and work just fine. Um, thanks to the uh, Harmony hub there. 
And last but not least, we have my subwoofer. That is a 200 watt, 10 inch uh, sub. All of the speakers, including the subwoofer, all Infinity speakers. Um, I think it's the R, RF line. Okay, so this is the part that you don't see. This is the back of the entertainment cabinet. Here I have wires that's coming directly from the basement. I have speaker wires and ethernet wires. The black one is a power um, wire that this cable is running up to the TV for power. So right here you can see some of my speaker wire. I'm using banana plugs to hook my speakers, to plug my speaker wires in. Uh, and those speaker wires are all 12 gauge wires. What I actually did was mounted a uh, five inch by 36 inch long board to the bottom so I can mount a 36 inch long um, power strip. And it, I wanna say it's a, it's a 14 plug strip and it's just the Amazon basic. It, I didn't really need anything sophisticated. So I just mounted that directly onto the board. And from there, I was able to plug all my components directly into that. And I actually have another um, surge protector inside the cabinet um, that's a little bit more robust than this. This is just serving to plug everything in. Um, now from the back, there's one thing back here you cannot see that I want to talk about. And that's just my Amazon, um, Amazon Fire TV right here. Okay. Now one of the last things I want to touch on, and then I'll wrap this up is this keyboard. Now this keyboard is a Logitech keyboard and it's made for home entertainment, home entertainment systems. Um, it syncs with the hub and it's kind of big, but I did not want one of the remotes with a little tiny keyboard on the back. I wanted like a keyboard that's almost full size and it, it is very close to being a full size keyboard. And most of the functions that on the remote are on this keyboard. A lot of the macros um, that are so on the keyboard is on here and you set it up in the Logitech app also. There's some buttons at the top here and you program the buttons. And in my situation, what I did was I programmed the first one for the Nvidia Shield, the next one for the Fire Stick, the next one for the PlayStation. So when I choose each button, it does the same functions as the, um, the handheld remote. The purpose for the keyboard was mainly the typing, of course, with so many apps having um, the, the ability to type in um, certain things in, as far as search functions go. With so many apps like YouTube having the ability to type in to search Disney Channel, Netflix, so you want to find something, you know, you just type in your criteria and you find it. But I hate using a remote to fish through on screen uh, keyboard. Whereas with this, I type quickly and I'm done. That's about it. If you guys found any information here useful, um, practical, entertaining, um, you know, be sure to give a thumbs up. If you didn't, there's also the other choice. Um, but while you're at it, if you did find stuff useful, be sure to subscribe because I'll do other videos like this. If there's any questions you guys have or if there's any insight you want to share with me, please be sure to leave a comment in the comment section. While you're at it, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And I thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, be safe. Take care.